and this still needs a bit of tail. Let's see what's here, okay? So, oh, that's tough. No, it jumped, see? No, it's gone past it. I have to manually lift it with this. Oh, a screwdriver to let Get a screwdriver, I can manually latch it to reset it again. It's a bit temperamental, but it does work. There you go. See there? Yeah, it's a bit temperamental. Hey viewers, I think I've fixed it now. I've, uh, I've, because this thing was so bent, it was pushed that far that way when it was down and it wasn't latched back up and it's been closed. And this has just pushed that plastic catch that way, bent it that way. And that's why I, when I fixed it, I couldn't get it to work. So I've got the screwdriver and bent it that way past that straight point. And now I put a spacer on here and I spaced it out another millimeter and tilted it a bit to compensate for the wear and it's working now. That's tight. That's better. That's better. Nice. Yeah, it's been worn out because it was never um, latched when it worn out and they just, they've, they've closed it and worn it and damaged it over, over, over time. But there you go, it's triggered. When that roller here hits that plate, that catch comes down it pushes back behind that roller and pushes hard and closes and holds the door closed. This is before they had magnets as door seals. This is crumbling apart too. So I'm going to have to uh, get some measurements on this and I'll order a new seal. No squeak. That door flims, it flings open but I don't want to smash into the air compressor or dent it. That flings open with uh, force now. The uh, cheese... Uh, the yeah, plastic's crumbling away. I'll try and get hold of a, um, in touch with a fellow collector. I know these were common, so these, there's plenty of parts for, for these carbonators. There's plenty of parts for those around. But this one, it's not a common fridge in Australia, as I said. Very hard to find the parts for this model. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's awesome there. That closes tight. That's gonna work much better. I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, that's all fixed. Thanks for watching. You know, if yours were well, I decided to, um, I made a few repairs on the, uh, my little Anderson connector here. I noticed my, um, negative was not quite connected. It was only just touching. And it had bzz, bzz, and I took me to unplug this. I don't know if my negative wasn't clicked all the way in. That they come off the little spring clip inside and the terminal was only just touching and it was only charging at 2 amps and I was like, wondering why I was only getting maximum of 2 or 3 amps at a time charging these batteries and there was a bloody loose connection in here so I fixed that now I'm getting constant up to 20 amps now swap up these wires, 40 amps going through that not quite, that's a bit warm about 30 amps it's capable of I haven't seen it get that high yet. So I've got to um, replace this. Uh, yeah, this TPS is too warm. Oh, that TPS is warm. Yeah. That TPS is a bit soft and squishy. <laughs> yeah, so making that TPS warm, that's for sure. I've got, the, um, I've got some connectors coming. MC4 connectors, a set of those are on their way. I'm going to wire it up to that and extend this uh, cable to here with a proper, proper solar cable. I have got some, but uh, I need some MC4 connectors. I mean, two mines are just there. Uh, I was going to put an Anderson plug in that, but because it's a, um, a type of cable, I'm better off with using an MC4 connector and making me um, make an extension cord. You just have something like uh, yeah, pretty much that the plugs in the other end of that um, of this cord, and then they have another just pretty much a correct way to solar cable all the way to here. I uh, just leave the ends bare and terminate them in there bare. Okay, I'm getting a bit of losses here. I should be getting at least 30 amps, and I'm not. This is a, a bottleneck. <laughs> That's TPS. It's just not up to it. I'm getting close though. Ideally, you don't want any um, warm wires, but what I'm probably going to do is run this to a switch. 
one of my solar panel switches, stick it up there, and then have more of this cable come out. That'll be a better idea. I can, I can always turn this off and isolate it should I need to service it. That'll be the safest option. I'm getting some good charge. This thing's making some noise. Yeah, it's not good. That's making some noise. Cheap charge controller. It does the job, but you can buy these rated at 100 amps, but they're not. They're just, they're fake. They're not rated for what they are. They don't fall for the uh, so-called 100 amp Muppet solar controllers. It's not 100 amp. That's too small for 100 amp. No way it can handle 100 amp. This particular one is 40 amp capable, but that's kind of pushing it. It's warm. The heat tech is helping, though. I don't know why I'm getting another Renergy Rover uh, charge controller like I got in the other setup. And the one on the other setup, I'm gonna probably gonna put a 100 amp one there, and that one can go in here. Because they're like, I quite like the Renergy charge controllers. Have a lot of very good reviews on them. One more test haven't done yet. I'm gonna get a uh, step down transformer. I'll hook this up to my scope and see what sort of how clean the output of this inverter is. That's one thing I didn't do. Send me the Mishto inverter. It's a uh, Hook it up to an oscilloscope and have a look how clean the sine wave is. That's a test I've been meaning to do. I've, uh, I've got my carbonated fridge running here. Clean it up inside and out. I've got to order some paint next. That's my next step is order some paint. I've, uh, shut, I've um, stopped my uh, fidget there, not using that at the moment, because I noticed this latch wasn't working. I've rebuilt that latch. You can see it latches up. When you hit that metal lever, there's a plastic catch that goes down, and it pulls hard and pushes against this, which holds the door tightly shut. Well, um, that hasn't been working in a long time, because it's been over jumping and smashed all this roller here. Yeah, it's been sitting on top of it instead of catching behind it on those rollers. It's been like that for a while. It's just got a, it just wouldn't close properly and this fridge was losing a bit of cold at the bottom. Losing its efficiency, so I'm gonna I'll fix that now. I've uh, pulled this all out, all off, pulled that catch out, oiled it all up and just straightened it all out and rebuilt it all. It's like an, um, a latch, a push latch, sort of, sort of principle. This uh, part here's got like a jaw, a catch on it that's just worn on one side of it. Twisted it so it's more exposed metal, fresh metal it can catch on. So that's uh, that set of the um, works good now. I washed it and cleaned it and put a bit of engine oil on it for some longevity. I've uh, taken the door off because these hinges are kind of loose and squeaky. I cut all of these hinges, so I'll take the door off. I'm gonna take this trim off. That just clips off. And I'm gonna uh, just check those screws, lubricate those hinges, tighten up any loose screws, try and get these out and fix these up because they're, they're a bit shabby and worn and I'm gonna fix that. Uh, yeah, that hinge here is really stiff. I don't like it. That's why there's bolts here to hold a hinge on cable loose. Very well made fridge. It uh, works very well. Just um, got to make it more efficient when I've finished with it. Very well constructed fridge. Got all these, uh, that door alone weighs 30 kilos. Very well made stuff. Anyway, let's continue with the restoration. This is a nice fridge, I quite like it. I'm quite lucky I saved it. Very glad I saved it for going to the dump because they just—they're not. This is not a common fridge in Australia. This old uh, model, particular fridge there. Let's have a meter miser compressor. Not very common. I've also uh, made some improvements to my carbonated fridge. I hosed it all out, let it sit for a couple of days, up to a week to dry out. That's nice and clean now. That's all been hosed out and cleaned. Straightened out some fins. Stuffed new rubber uh, material there. You can replace those bolts because the original bolts are too short. All four of the uh, mounts have been new, uh, re -new, uh, new rubber mounts I've made up. Stuffed on under here and there because this just kept rattling no matter what. It's just annoying and loud. This thing's pretty quiet now. You just get that sort of noise. I've uh, 
inspected the pipe rubbing and anything else, it's pretty good. There's not much pipe rubbing in there from the vibrations. So I want to get some um, insulating material that the uh, air conditioning splitties, splitties use. If you install a split system, you get that insulated uh, foam insulation. I want to get some of that and just run it over this back pipe, put that in some insulation. Just cut it down the middle and run it over with just a bit of dip zip ties. Because uh, that's a little bit of cold there. You lose a tiny bit of uh, cooling performance just with that pipe alone. About four inches below here, it starts getting cold, and the cold starts, so you want to insulate that uh, evaporator pipe to get as much of the cold in the system inside as you can. And that will make this thing pretty well like a modern fridge, efficient. That's all it needs. Other than that, it's pretty damn efficient as it is. It's just a late in a new paint job. I just got to order some appliance paint and get this thing a good paint job. It's a nice fridge. So is this one. Okay, just soft it on about 30 seconds ago. That's quiet. Very quiet. Just the inside. Put one of those LED filament bulbs there. That looks very nice in there. Probably should paint these shelves a nice chrome, I reckon. I'm not sure yet. That soldering's come off, but I'm um, not too worried about that. It's not fussed in the top, but it's working on anyway. But that pipe here, I'll get that out the road. From here to here is a new copper pipe that's all been soldered in, that's been replaced. So, had some tender love and care done at this fridge. Look at these cans, they can press and make a racket. <laughs> Bloody heavy compressor too, I lift the compressor up to put the mounts underneath it. Boy, it's a heavy lump of metal, that thing. Must weigh at least six or seven kilos. Weighs about as much as a small engine. It's virtually how it's built anyway. This thing cleaned up nice. It's nice and cold in there. Got the mould off. Bit of vinegar and soapy water. This thing looks beautiful inside. Better close it now. That works nice. It was 100% when I plugged it in uh, about 5 o'clock yesterday and overnight I dropped down to about 455 amp hour. The sun is shining today very nicely on the panels and it's actually running off the solar panels that Fitch. Full sun intensity on straight in the panels. It's charging the batteries and there's still enough to run the fridge and charge the batteries so that fridge is virtually yeah, free energy. The fridge is running straight off the sun. That's the uh, first time that fridge has ever been run off the grid with using this technology in its 60 year uh, life. Yeah, it doesn't cost much to run these bad old, old fridges. They're pretty efficient anyway, but still uses less power than the, uh, the fridge in the kitchen does. Look at that, I've still got plenty of power to charge the batteries and that fridge is running. I'll wait till the fridge turns off and then I'll do a separate video scope the output of this inverter then when the fridge turns on see how that changes the, uh, any noise in this inverter I'm pretty happy with it so far it's not the best inverter in a color they make some uh, spanning swandler bloody fake brands of these bloody particular inverters but happy with it so far it's a cheap inverter but it's handled pretty much everything that I could throw on it so far anyway 